Hi, I'm Andy. We're back at the Drum Supply House Shell Shop, and I'd like to introduce you to Rob Campa. He heads up things here at the shop. Hi, Rob. Hi, boys and girls. Tell us about yourself. Well, I've, uh, for the last 15 years, had a small custom drum company that you might have heard of called Magstar. I do a lot of repairs and so. mostly just snare drum work now, but as you know, I've been working for you for quite some time now, running the Shell Shop, doing all layout and drilling and custom preparation of drum shells from orders that your customers give you. Yeah. Well, we've instituted an eight-step process here in the Shell Shop. Why don't we uh, take a look at the process, kind of go through the steps. What's number one? Well, first, I'm standing in there, uh, one of our canyons of uh, drum supply house uh, shells that we have, probably in stock, over 300 drum shells. Tons of shells. We have a, uh, always a fresh supply of shells. We try to keep it to a three-month minimum of storage here. So my first step from an order would be to choose a drum shell that a customer has um, designed for himself according to grain pattern, ply configuration, and most of these shells come in as tubes, so our first step is to choose a drum shell. Alright, let's step out into our tool area and uh, see what we're going to do here to cut this shell out. So is this shell true from Kelly when they come in in tubes? They usually are, but what we like to do is to just give it a quick true on a three foot sanding disc that we have here, just to make sure that after I've cut the shell, I won't have to remove any more material to take off less of the depth. Okay. So, just in a what I end up here with is a nice flat surface, so after I've made my cut on the table saw, I won't have to remove any more of the depth of the shell. Alright, well let's cut it down. Okay, so I'm going to place this nice flat side against this fence. Put on some ear protection. I I'll let it rip. Okay, now we're left with a 6x13 8 ply shell in a rough form, so we're going to run that up against the sand just again. Check our measurements. Perfect. Alright, so we've got a good flat surface here from our sander, um, so the next step is to actually install a bearing edge onto the shell. Okay, let's uh, cut a six ply inner cut at a 45 degree angle All right. using this tape setup. Alright, let's put on our hearing protection. And then we let it rip. All right, so we got a nice 45 degree edge on there. Um, I noticed that uh, in your process you used a lot of hand motions there, a lot of different techniques and all. Um, could that process be done on an automated machine? Not really, Andy. I uh, cut a six ply inner cut at a 45 degree angle using three different motions. Okay. I went with the rotation of the bit, against it, and I did kind of a circular movement. Yeah. So every drum isn't a perfect entity, and there's no such thing as a flawless drum or a flawless edge. Yeah, it's so wood you, after all, it's from a tree. It is, and it takes a lot of fashioning and uh, human element involved in creating the edge that you need, whether it's a single inner cut or a configuration of uh, two different types of cuts. So you got to use your sense of touch as much as your sense of sight to make sure that the edge is just right. Mm -hmm. It's all about the human touch. Yes. So if we were going to make a snare from this shell, which it's sized perfectly for, we would have to install a snare bed. Um, so tell us, what is the purpose of a snare bed? Well, snare beds are that little indentation or valley in the resonant side of a snare drum that allow the snares to lay in there when they're engaged. Okay. So they provide the hopefully perfect amount of resonance and sustain out of the snares when they're engaged. Okay, so in general, you would like to have a snare bed on a snare drum. You do. Some of our customers order them with and some of them order them without. That's a detailed process, but we have a specific template that we've worked out through many, many years. Mm -hmm. Through many years of research and techniques handed down from uh, Bill at Bill's Drum Repair. Yeah, all the way back to Quarter before that. Mm -hmm. It's the way Quarters was doing snare beds long ago, and it's the way we continue to do it for consistency. 
All right, so this is one edge, but we offer a number of other edges on our drum shells. Um, we have a quad router table set up uh, here so that we can do many different uh, offerings. Um, tell us about some of our other edges. We also have five different router tables with various bits to cut anything from a 60 degree from horizontal mm -hmm. to 30 degree from horizontal edge to roundovers for hoops and more vintage style edges. Yeah, we're just set up here to do the whole deal. For inlays, and over there we have our big guns, three horsepower Porter cable, which can cut 20 and 30 ply drum shells in one pass. So you need good torque, you need a lot of power, not necessarily a lot of RPMs to cut good edges, mm -hmm. but we have everything from Makita and Craftsman to another 45 degree setup here with an old Rockwell router. It's probably the best router that I ever had because it's all metal and uh, it goes like blazes when it cuts edges. Nice. Yeah, I guess we can do, we've got such a setup here, we can do almost any edge that a customer would request. Um, so there's many other options that we can do. Uh, and speaking of options, we uh, have some of our shell, uh, snare shell options here, not just snare shells, but uh, other, other shells as well. We're now doing the acrylics and uh, full kit sizes. Um, what else do we have here, Rob? This shell um, that's underneath the acrylic shell is uh, one of the new 15-ply Keller shells. This is a uh, curly maple figured exterior ply. Uh, down here is another Keller shell. It's solid steam bent shells are doing now with solid steam bent maple and solid steam bent uh, one-piece reinforcing rings. And they can come equipped with a 35-degree intercut, which gives you more of a, a vintage look and sound. This is an aluminum shell offered also by Keller. A lot of guys are getting into different metals mm -hmm. uh, and different hybrids. Now we um, do our special snare bed on that shell as well. Yes, we do. It's the same uh, contour, same profile. So we want to make sure that all of our snare beds on our drums are consistent. Okay. You mentioned the rings in this room here. Um, is that, that's a handmade process. Why don't we, uh, we show how we put our rings in? All right, so this is a blank reinforcement ring. It's trimmed out of uh, the same size tube with our custom uh, table saw set up. So uh, why would a customer actually want to put a reinforcement ring into a shell? Well, on snare drums and tom-toms, if you're using thinner shells, a reinforcing ring provides more dimensional stability for a thin shell drum. Okay. And they off, uh, offer uh, a warmer sound from the drum like vintage drums and they increase the overall pitch of the drum shell slightly. Okay, so that's good on uh, snare drums. A lot of our customers like to raise the pitch by adding more mass with rings. Right, and if they want warmer sound on bass drums and tom-toms, they add them and uh, cuts down on the ring a little bit and it gives more body to the drum. Okay. All right, well, let's take this ring and make it fit inside of the shell and uh, install this sucker. Okay, so we take this stock. We're gonna have to remove some of the material from the inside so that we can make it fit because it's a smaller diameter. Okay. So I cut that on a scroll saw and then I even up the edges on my oscillating sander and the result is a ring about this size where I'm going to fit inside the top and bottom just like so and it's going to be glued in. The end result is a reinforcing ring that has no discernible gap where it meets. Okay, so we would clean this up. I notice a lot of the Keller shells have uh, the inner ply gaps. You know, sometimes there's little holes and things. Yeah, those are core gaps. All right, so we're not going to putty that. That would be a shoddy way of doing that. No, at Drum Supply House, we don't use any wood putty or artificial fillers. We use actual strips of wood provided by Keller okay. and fill those in so it's discernible and it becomes a, a part of the drum. If I had any core gaps where I need to fill in with wood, I would take a little spline of wood provided by Keller and uh, usually these are glued in and then cut off and then we sand these down by hand with progressive grits of sandpaper just like we do the exterior of a drum okay. we start with 150 progress to 180 and final the edges and the outside of the drum with 220 to a smooth finish okay. And uh, the insides of shells are sanded also with uh, 150 to 220. Nice. All right, so another process that we uh, do here at Drum Supply House is the installation of drum wrap onto the shell. Um, what kind of glue are we using for that? Well, we do an awful lot of covering here. And uh, we've been using 30 NF water-based contact adhesive, or I have, for the last 16 years. I had a drum set featured in Modern Drummer that long ago. I stopped using 
the stinky solvent-based contact adhesives because they uh, stunk up my house and gave me a headache. Okay. And I've been using these with no problem at all. Okay, so I've got a shell, I've got a piece of material, and I've got to cut it to measure the exact diameter of the drum. It's a nice tool there. Comes in handy, makes the job much easier. I'm going to have an overlap here where this piece overlaps this other piece and I have a little of excess on the bottom and the top of the shell so I can trim that off later and cut that in with a router to make it just right. Okay. So now I'm going to take this drum over to a high pressure roller machine. What this does is clamp this in. You tighten down on these rather large wing screws and you roll the drum around it gets out all the bubbles and by applying even more pressure you can weld that seam together nice. what I've found is that when you use a pressure rolling machine you get the tightest bond possible between the covering and the drum Okay. now we do a lot of custom work here in the shop as well and part of that is uh, layout and drilling work so uh, let's just kind of take a brief overview of, of some of those uh, options. Sure, That's I would take this drum. It's a setup to have, uh, this is a six lug tom tom. So we have uh, diagrams set up for every diameter drum to show where our lugs are going to be placed so that we can make our drilling marks and all marks and then finally drill them. Okay, now this layout mat here, this is uh, something you can just make this at home. Yeah, anybody can make one of these. Yeah. Just a compass to measure around in the 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. And, just and you can it. divide them out into a grid of six, eight, or ten lugs. Okay. So if you've decided where your lugs are going to go, you simply make marks on your counter cut of your bearing edge. And those marks then allow you to use a T-square. And we offer uh, a wide variety of different types of lugs that all have different hole patterns. Okay. And all those hole patterns have different sized drill bits to be used. Okay. If I'm drilling this drum out, then I'm going to be making marks on the drum, then I'm going to be making all marks, and I'm going to be taking it over to one of our three drill presses okay. and uh, cutting those holes. But if the customer has only ordered the drum with the layout, then we line these drums up with our marks at a cross section will be where the drill bit enters the drum, so the customer is going to know that. Okay. So if they're handy with uh, power tools, they can do their own drilling, but we can lay it out so it's foolproof. Well, thanks for stopping by the Drum Supply House Shell Shop today. Um, thanks, Rob, for showing us around. It's been my pleasure, yeah. and I just wanted to say that all you customers out there, remember that there's never any order that's too bizarre or too complicated for us. We do everything from vintage restorations to the drum set of your wildest dreams. Yeah. We, uh, we look forward to seeing your shell come through our shell shop here. And be sure to stop by the drummaker.com website or give us a call. We'd like to say hello to you at 1-800-NEW-DRUM. Thanks again. Goodbye.